Good morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. I am Pastor-elect Ted Colbert. I bring you greetings from the Liberty Temple Full Gospel Church and World Outreach Ministries. I uh, want to thank you for viewing this particular teaching. Um, I live in Chicagoland. My church is Liberty Temple Full Gospel Church World Outreach Ministry. Apostle Dr. Shereen Lathan is my apostle and my pastor. Um, our church is located at 2233 West 79th Street in Chicago. We'll be there tomorrow at 11 o'clock, as, as I will. Uh, if you're looking for a church home, Liberty Temple is a wonderful church. We have three, two other apostles, Apostle Darlin Turner and Apostle Early James. We call those two apostles, along with Apostle Lathan, who's our chief apostle, we call them our threefold core that is not easily broken. Amen. They are great leaders, great preachers and teachers, and they really do a great job of running our ministry. Um, as I mentioned, the Mother Church is at 2233 West 79th Street in Chicago, but we have churches all over the world. We are a network at this point, a Liberty Temple network. Amen. So as I mentioned, if you live in Chicagoland or northern Illinois, northern um, Indiana, looking for a good church home, please come and see us tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Amen. Um, the title of today's message is that we, the people, saints of God, are a representative figure of God. We are a representative figure of God. Would you pray with me? Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray that I would decrease, that thou mightest be increased on this morning. I pray that I would preach and teach only those things that become sound doctrine. O oh God, for thou art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all those that call upon you, Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And that eternal life that was with the Father hath been manifested unto us. And that this is eternal life. To know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Hallelujah. Of the things that we've spoken unto you, the Bible says, this is the sum. For we have such an high priest who sat down at the right hand, Caraboso, of the majesty in the heavens. For such a high priest became us, who's holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Oh, hallelujah. So once again, welcome to this teaching that we are a representative figure of God. And we're going to start at, um, at John 20 and 21, KJV. John 20 and 21. KJV, and we wrote, we're going to read 20, 21 and 22, John. St. John 20, 21 and 22. Then said Jesus unto them, again speaking to the disciples, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. So here in the 21st verse, we're seeing that he's commissioning and sending the apostles out. Now let's look at what he does in the 22nd verse. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So when Christ breathed on the disciples, they received the Holy Ghost. Well, why, Ted? Well, they received the Holy Ghost. 21 said, 2021 St. John, Jesus said, I'm sending you out. As my Father has sent me, I'm sending you. So they needed to be in, in due with power from on high. And Jesus breathed, breathed blue on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So that they received the Holy Ghost for service as um, Christ was sending them out to do his work. Amen? So, um. When it says breathed, this word breathed is a Greek word, emphuseo, E-M-P-H-U-S-A-O in the Greek. 
as I always teach every week, the New Testament is uh, is a translation and so is the Old Testament. The New Testament was originally written in Greek, so this is the Greek word for, for breathe. It's infuseo. So as I mentioned, this is a special infilling of the Holy Ghost that Jesus gave to the disciples before Pentecost. Amen? The Holy Ghost was not available to every saved person until the day of Pentecost. Okay, when the Holy Ghost was there. So, it's interesting here. Here we see that Christ breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit along with all of his power. Now, I want to share, we're, we're going to go to uh, Genesis 2 7. I'm going to show you something that maybe a lot of you didn't know. I didn't know until <laughs> I was studying and, and learned this. Let's go to Genesis 2 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the earth, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, listen, and man became a living soul. Oh my God, this is so good. So here we see that the Lord had formed man. He made him. Now, I'm going to teach you a couple things to make sure that we grasp what's going on. Okay? Genesis 2, 7 says, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. The word formed here, because the Old Testament was written originally in Hebrew, so this is a translation to the KJV. Um, the word Form, listen, this is good, is the Hebrew word yatsar, Y-A-T-S-A-R, and it means to squeeze into shape, to mold into a form as a potter, listen, as a potter sculpts a pot. So that's how God yasard man. Now, keep your finger there in 2.7. I want to show you something else. And we're going to go to Genesis um, 1, 26 and 27. Hold on just a second. Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27. Let's look. And God said, let us make man. See, it us. Trinity. Father, Son, listen, Holy Ghost. So this is a nod to the Trinity. The word Elohim, which is one of the words for God. It's the main word that we see in Genesis 1 for God. The only word that we see in Genesis 1 for God. Elohim is the plural of Eloah. Again, pointing to the Trinity. Elohim is plurality, pointing to the Trinity. So God is the Father, Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All three are equally God, but they have different functions. Hallelujah. Genesis 126, 127. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Hold it. This is where it gets good. The word image is the Hebrew word testalem, T-E-S-L-E-M, testalem, and it means a representative figure. So this is telling us, when it says, let us make man in our testalem, so what that's telling us is that we, as a testalem of God, are a representative figure of God. A representative figure has to have the aspects of that which you are the representative figure of. Is that by women? He said, let us, let us make him let us make him in our tessalim after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Listen, this is why God gave man dominion. Let me uh, tell you what dominion means here. Hold on. Let me get to it. Dominion is the Hebrew word radar, R-A-D-A-H, R-A-D-A-H, amen? And it means to tread down, that is to subjugate, okay? So he said us humans, well he's speaking to Adam now, but all of us that are going to be humans, that are humans, excuse me, but he formed Adam in the Tesselim image of God, representative figure, so Adam was a representative figure of God, and it says, let them, these men, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, it's interesting that we, in the Tesselim of God, we as representative figures of God, as we're going to see when I go back to, to Genesis 2 and 7, it said that God formed man from the dust of the earth. Let's go on to 27, to 127. So God created man in his own image, underline created. The word created there is the Hebrew word bara, which means to make something out of nothing. Listen. He created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. All right. So in 27, we see that God barad man. And when we go from 127 to 27 in Genesis, we're going to see that there were two, God doing two creations. 127, we said that God barad man, this is representative of the spiritual aspect of man. And there was nothing for you to make the spiritual aspect out of, so he made it out of nothing. Bam, barad. Come on. 127, Genesis. So God created man in his own tesselim or image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hmm. So let's go. So here we see, and we're going to see in Genesis 2, 7, that when he formed the natural aspect of man, when he formed man's body, <laughs> hallelujah, he formed him with his hands. He got his hands dirty. Ain't nobody praying. When he made man. The other, the animals, the fish, everything, God just said, let there be. Huh? When God wanted animals, he turned to the earth. When God wanted fish and birds, he turned to the water and said, let there be. Are y'all with me? When you study, the birds came out of the water, just like the fish came out of the water, and the animals came out of the land. So here we see that God just said, let, for everything else except man. Ain't nobody praying. Hallelujah. We learn a principle here in Genesis 1. When God wanted to make something, create something, he, he looked at what he was going to call it out of, and then it came. So when he wanted fish and birds, he looked at the water. He said, let. Hmm? When he wanted animals, creeping things, he looked at the earth, and he said, let. So when he wanted animals, he looked at the earth and called them out. When he wanted fish and birds, he looked at the, at the waters, and he called them out of that. But when he wanted man, he looked at himself. Ain't nobody praying. Let us make man in our image. Woo! Glory to God. So as I said, 127, when he 
uh, a broad man. That's the spiritual aspect of man. Something out of nothing. Are y'all with me? Let's go back to Genesis 2 7. Because some people will say, okay, well, if he made man in Genesis 127 and 126, why did he make him over again in, in 2 7? Let's read Genesis 2 7. The Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Oh, this is so good. Um, then we're going to go back to 127. So here, hold on a second. Let me pull this up. Genesis 2, 7. And I tell you that it said God formed man, Yatsah, from the dust of the earth. So here he isn't doing something out of nothing. The dust already existed. He formed man. He squeezed man out like a potter makes a pot. This is the body of man, the physical aspect of man. I feel my teacher trying to come. Hallelujah. He said he made him of the dust. He made this physical aspect of man, this body of man, from the dust of the ground and breathed, underline breathe, good God Almighty, into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So God made man from the dust, the Bible says. Born man from the dust of the ground. The word dust here is the Hebrew word afar, A-P-H-A-R, and it means clay, earth, mud, ground. Okay. Foreign man from the dust of the ground. Let's look at, at what ground means in the Hebrew. The word, oh, this is so good. <laughs> the word ground is the Hebrew word Adama. Uh, A D A M A H. We take the word Adam from this Hebrew word for ground. Huh? And this word Adama means soil from its general redness. And Adam, the name Adam, which comes from the root word Adama, means red earth. Akabosha. So the Lord formed man from the dust of the red earth. Breathe, this is where it gets so good, into his nostrils, the breath of life. Hallelujah. Now this word breathed here, and this was is the Hebrew because this was written originally, originally in Hebrew, is the Hebrew word nafak, N-A-P-H-A-C-H, and it means to puff, to inflate, to blow. Okay? He nafeshed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Hallelujah. So now we're going to have some fun. Remember I taught you in John 20 chapter, it said that Jesus breathed on them, his disciples, and said received the Holy Ghost. They received the Holy Ghost for service because the Holy Ghost hadn't indwelled the earth yet, so the, the disciples had the Holy Ghost for service. To do the work of the Lord. Everybody with me. And I told you. That that word. Is in fusao. Therefore brief. But guess what. In the original. There is a, a Greek version. Of the Old Testament. And it is called the Septuagint. The Septuagint. Is spelled. S-E-P-T-U-A-G-I-N-T. -E and it means 70 in the Latin. It's Latin word. Now we're going to get back to this, but I want to show you. This is where it really starts to get interesting. In Genesis 2-7, when it said, He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The Septuagint is the Greek version of the New, of the Old Testament. As I'm getting ready to teach you, um, this Septuagint version, this was the first translation from the Hebrew, and this 
Septuagint was more popular and more widely used than the Hebrew, the original version. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. So, and, I, and as I said, Septuagint comes from the Latin word for 70. So, where it says in Genesis 2, 7, it says, He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And I tell you that the, the Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. That word breathed is infusao. Uh, that same word in Genesis, what is it, 20 and 21, where it says that Jesus breathed, blew on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So that means he blew life into Adam. But wait a minute. If infuseo means to blow or puff, and the Holy Ghost come from that blow or puff, this is the same word here when he's forming the body of Adam. Are y'all listening to me? So when he, in the Greek, that's infuseo. So, and when you infuseo, Holy Ghost came in John 20. So God infuseo in the Greek version of, uh, of the Old Testament. So that means that Adam was filled with the Holy Ghost. Same word. Wait a minute. <laughs> Same word, one Old Testament, one New Testament, same word that the disciples got filled with the Holy Ghost for service from. Woo! Ain't nobody praying with me. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, yes. So here we find that man as a representative figure of God had the Holy Ghost. That makes sense if he's a representative figure of the Father, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So now we know, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about the Septuagint and we'll be done. Let's go back to Genesis 126 and 127. Now I taught you that this word uh, likeness, or image, excuse me, is tesselim, which means a representative figure. So man, and the reason why he told man to take dominion in Genesis 20 and 26 is because man is in is a representative figure of God. Wait a minute. That's why man has an intellect. Oh, I feel my preach. That's why man can pray. That's why man keeps history for hundreds of years. Porcupines don't keep history. <laughs> Chipmunks don't keep history. Want to know why? Because they're not in the Tesselim of God. Uh, <laughs> huh? When the lion kills the giraffe to eat, he doesn't feel sorry for the giraffe. Wait a minute. He doesn't feel guilty. You want to know why? Because the lion is not in the Tesselim of God. <laughs> but we are. Man is. And that's how come man can pray. Come on. That's how come man has an intellect. That's how come man keeps history. Oh, I feel about preaching. Hallelujah. That's why man keeps history. Hallelujah. As I mentioned, porcupines don't keep history because they have no intellect. They can't write. They can't do any of that stuff. That's why man has an intellect because we are a representative figure of God. Oh, this is so good. Hallelujah. So this is why God told Adam to take dominion over the earth because Adam was a representative figure of God. And may I teach you this area where God yasarred the body of Adam, formed it. The, the soil in that area had 15, about 15 elements in it. And guess what? Huh. This is so good for the atheists and the agnostics and the people that try and refute the Bible. Guess how many elements are in our body? 15. <laughs> the same trace elements that was in the soil there where God formed Adam from the dust of the earth is in our bodies today. 
Uh, so this totally blows out the 